What's up, dude? Yo, how are you doing? Pretty good. I just came from the police force, please. Yep. What is it, the G Wagon? Yeah. And I told you not to take anything apart, so. You, yeah, not to touch it. I wanted to buy a, a port of power to start going on the inside and pushing shit out, too. Oh, God. That's what I was going to do. He would have destroyed the other side of the car and not pushed anything out. And then, going back to Florida? Going back to Florida. Ooh. Going back to Florida? Oh, with Mr. Floppy on board. Floppy. Day three is officially here, and that means it's a race against the clock. Today is the deadline in my last day with 23rd Garage before I head back to Florida. That means we need to finish the framework on my Volkswagen Golf R today, or I'm gonna be in some serious trouble. Luckily, we've made some incredible progress these last two days. Day one, we managed to overcome quite a few surprises, like missing parts. Yeah, see, we're missing the outer skin. And hidden damage. Fortunately, though, we were still able to straighten out the car and remove most of the damage. Even better, on day two, we were able to remove the old frame rail and replace it with the new one. We were also able to install the new rear apron. That means all that's left today is welding everything permanently and making sure it all aligns smoothly. Easier said than done. To start off the day, Yuri went over all the measurements to make sure everything was straight before welding. Once he was happy with it, he tack welded the rear apron onto the frame rails to make sure nothing moved when we put the rear reinforcement on the car. This is because the only thing holding it on at the moment are just the rear reinforcement bolts. With the reinforcement now on the car, it acts as another tool that can be used to straighten it out. With everything in position, it was time to start welding the belly pan to the rear apron. Now maybe some of you guys are wondering why Yuri is hitting each weld with a hammer, and this is because when you weld, the metal gets hot and it almost shrinks a bit. So by hammering the weld with a dolly, it will flatten the weld and stretch the metal back into the desired shape, and will also save time when grinding the welds down. As you can see, there are a lot of holes that need to be filled with weld. Now, from factory, a car's sheet metal is held together with spot welds, different than what we're doing right now. This welding process happens by applying pressure and heat from an electric current to the weld area, and it works by contacting copper alloy electrodes to the sheet surfaces, whereby pressure and electric current are applied and heat is generated by the passage of current through resistive materials. What Yuri is currently doing is called MIG welding, and this style of welding uses a continuously fed electrode wire and shielding gas via a handheld torch. Now, both techniques work extremely well for what we're trying to accomplish. The main difference between the two is that a professional spot welder is thousands upon thousands of dollars compared to a MIG welder, which could be just a couple. With the belly pan finally welded to the car, it was time to test fit the hatch and make sure everything still lined up perfect. We put the rubber seal back on too, just to make sure the hatch would seal correctly to the trunk. Too, yeah, I was gonna ask how you did that from the inside. I'm, I may, I may or may not have ruined a clip hole. Uh, anyways, yeah, that's all that's left right now is to line this tail light up, uh, straighten out this corner right here a little bit more, and that's it. I mean, I've already started welding, and everything's 
everything looks really good. Everything's lined up. We got the seal on it. We've got the floorboard straightened out. I, I pushed it out right here a little bit, but I think what I need to do is I need to pull the actual skin right here because it's a, it's a double wall. So I need to pull the skin because uh, by pushing it, you know, it's just pushing the inner part instead of the whole thing. Uh, and then I can't really grab it by anything because it's just a piece of skin and there's no flange. So we just need to figure out a way to get that pulled out and uh, finish welding it up and she's going home. No exhaust stuff. Leave the exhaust off. Yeah, leave the exhaust off. <laughs> That way you get pulled over every single day. That's when Yuri came up with a brilliant idea. Just add another clip hole. I didn't do anything. Oh, that came there? That was like that. Gotcha. That's factory. That hole? Yep, factory. Certified auto repair. Two hole? They must have made a mistake over there at Volkswagen. Yeah, at some point. The Vag Group. The Vag? <laughs> the Vag Group. Somehow I was able to find the plate that went in the corner of the trunk. It was all crumbled up, but I figured if the floor was able to get straightened out, then so can this piece. Lo and behold, I got it straight and it was a perfect fit. Now this saves us tons of time because we don't have to fabricate a new one. After, it was time to grind down the welds. Not only does this make the car look more OEM, but there's actually a good reason to do this. Now obviously, grinding a weld down too much will make it weaker, but if you have too much weld, you'll get stress concentrations at the toes. So by grinding and blending it down, you can actually make the joint stronger. I got a surprise visit by VTuned, which was really cool. He checked out the Golf R for a little and said it's coming out pretty good. So that's great news to hear. Now, for those that don't know, VTuned also has a popular rebuild channel and is also Yuri's brother. Now, if you want to check out either of them, then I'll leave a link down to their channels in the description below. Next up was cleaning up the car and prepping the other side, the outside of the apron for welding. Now, first I grinded down the welds and then Sean and I scuffed up the apron to get it ready for primer so it has something to adhere to. Then I continued to grind down all the welds and vacuum out all the junk that was in the inside of the car because we'll be priming that bare metal as well. After making sure the outer apron still aligns correctly, which it does, we can go ahead and spray the area with some weld through primer. That's the primer? No, that's for the welding. Yeah, this is weld through primer. Oh yeah and affix the outer wall with some sheet metal screws to hold it in place. Yuri welded all the holes I punched out in the last episode, and it was quite a tedious process, but he was able to get it done. Then I grinded all those welds down and Sean scuffed it up to make sure that the primer could adhere as well. And I can officially say that at this point in time, we are done welding the car. Yuri primed the bare metal with some self-etching primer. And the reason you use self-etching primer on bare metal and not regular primer is because regular primer prevents moisture and oils from coming up from the surface, while self-etching primer prevents moisture and oils from penetrating or going down to the material underneath and causing it to rust. Basically, self-etching primer etches itself into the metal while primer kind of just sits on the top as a layer of protection. 
Now, after the primer dried, it was then time to seam seal all the edges of the metal. We used a urethane sealer and diluted it with some lacquer thinner to apply it easier. You see, seam sealer is like an additional coating to help prevent the intrusion of water and dust and air, and also aiding in providing corrosion resistance at the weak points of the metal, which would be where they overlap each other at the ends. Alrighty guys, so that is the end of the three day bender here in Chattanooga, Tennessee, rebuilding the rear end of the Volkswagen Golf R. Couldn't have done it without Yuri and 23rd Garage. So huge shout out to their team for making this all possible. You know, make sure to check out their channel. I'll put it down in the description of today's video and the next couple of videos for you guys to watch. Yeah, there's a lot more to come still. So definitely make sure to smash the like button, turn on post notifications, subscribe, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Peace. Drive off into the sun's not set. Yeah, it's dark. Yeah, so hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and That doesn't sound too bad, I'm gonna be honest. That doesn't sound bad at all. Turn the lights on, they didn't. Hey, now you can just, you can drive down the road now. Down in Florida. That's what I said, I said, let's just drive it back. Give it one nice, uh, give it one nice little rev. I need to hear it. A rev, mom. A little rev. Oh, it's not bad, video. Let me honestly. Video. That's not bad. Why? Yeah. Are you happy with your vehicle? That's a, that shows you how quiet it is with all that on it too. You gotta put it on the trailer though. Nah, you're gonna drive it. Could, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. American Idol. Just get you somebody to write you some songs. Yeah, bro. I'm gonna start with a cover, I think. At the shop, at the body shop. The bo yeah, we'll do the music video here. <laughs> we got the cameras, we got the mic. Pull me closer.